Welcome back to the lecture series in animal physiology. So, in the last class, which was the first lecture of the sixth week, we talked about the spatial and temporal summation and I concluded the class with uh, overall layout of what, what all I will be dealing in the light of this action potential, temporal summation, role of neurotransmitters and all that stuff. Okay. So, before I proceed, let us revisit the anatomical aspects. So, if you remember, this is what I have covered with you people, the central nervous system, brain and the spinal cord and peripheral nervous system, all nerve network outside the spinal cord, information gathered all from outside spinal cord and from outside and sent to spinal cord and brain. This I have already shown you. And then I have told you about the motor neuron pathway, dorsal pathway, the ventral pathway, the descending pathway and all this stuff. Okay. So, part of the anatomy I have already covered. Okay. Now, what I will do is from here, I will move on to with this brief background, I will move on to the let me just put it down. This is week 6, lecture 2, W 6 L 2. Okay. Now, uh, let me move on to the anatomy of the brain, what the brain anatomy really looks like, because that detail I have not dealt with you. Okay. Okay. Let us start with it. Let us go ahead with the brain anatomy first. So, I have already talked to you about the descending pathway and the ascending pathway. Ascending pathway is all the informations from all the peripherals which are reaching to the brain. So, the way it works, first of all try to visualize this picture and it is something like this is the location, this is the main stadium and all the roads are kind of you know coming towards it. So, you are going to see a game or something. So, it is something like this, this is a central hub which is receiving all the signals. Now, once you get inside the stadium, you have a specific ticket number, it is not that it, everybody sits randomly. So, you have a seat number, based on that you go and you know cover the whole stadium. So, there are cloud, uh, crowds flocking from both all directions, but they have a specific number, they have a specific gate numbers through which you enter. Exactly brain is like that. You just replace the stadium with the brain and all those gates around the stadium as with the nerves which are coming there. So, there are nerves which are reaching to the brain okay. and then all those chairs or seats in the stadium are designated spot for every nerve to reach. So, this is where that kind x, y, z information will be processed. What I mean by x, y, z information? Say for example, there is a visual information coming. So, it will be processed in the visual cortex. So, there is a region of the brain which is called visual cortex. So, it is exactly the same corollary as the chairs in a stadium with a designated number. So, you should follow that and sit in that specific seat. Similarly, if it is a auditory information, then it will go to the auditory cortex. If it is a taste related information, there is a place gustatory that is where it will go. So, similarly, there are several locations within the brain where the information goes, but much earlier than that. Well, let us put it like this. Once they reach their spot, they are being processed and through the descending pathway, 
messages are being sent back, this is how you have to react. But then the system has to match it with its some other reference. If you are seeing something for the first time, then that is the first reference point. But then you try to match it, suppose you see a dinosaur tomorrow. So, you have to match it that this is I have read about uh, there are dinosaurs, you know you will start correlating or you see a face, you will try to correlate it with some face. So, you already have some reference or you may not have any reference of something. That is possibly happen when a child grows up. So, but then you have a matching reference. So, this is it and that part is called learning. So, first let us try to understand the anatomy and the seat where most of this information believed to be stored. Okay. So, if you see the brain from the top, the top view of the brain, it is something like this. So, it has two hemisphere this is how the brain looks like. This is the brain stem which is going down, this I have already talked to you, you have the descending pathway, you have the ascending pathway and all that stuff. Now, this is your dorsal view, then there is a ventral view. If you just flip it down, the brain looks like something like this. Okay. This is the ventral view of the brain. Now, you have two hemisphere left and the right which so very reference you gave. Now, out here somewhere out here you cannot see it, it is slightly deeply folded inside there is a structure like this. like this. And this structure is deeply embedded. You can only figure out this structure if you have some way or other from the ventral side if you can you know cut the two hemispheres separately. So, you have say for example, a hemisphere like this and you are looking it from the ventral side it will look something like this. Now, if you could scoop out this part of the tissue, you can scoop out this part of the tissue and then the lower part, this is where this particular system will be sitting. this is where it is sitting. It is fairly deeply placed inside and this particular <coughs> structure which is very similar to a seahorse for the Greeks is called hippocampal region. Or in short you call it hippocampus. This is one area which is deeply involved believed to be again believed to be deeply involved in memory formation learning
okay. Now, how do we know that this area is involved in it? So, this will bring us to the previous class when I talked to you about epilepsy. So, out here in the hippocampus, if you place the hippocampus, so you have I am showing you like this, right. If I place it like this, the tissue will look something like this. Now, something like this. So, I am just follow it one second. So, here is the tissue. I just if, if this is how the tissue looks like, it is showing like this, right. I am just place it like this. So, how it will look like? It will look like a curved structure on it. So, on the surface, if you look at it from the top, it will look like a half moon kind of shape, okay. So, this is exactly what I am trying to draw in the next. So, it is something like a half moon with a stretch extended likewise, okay. And if you have access to very good microscope, you will see there is a layer in this structure and this is a three dimensional structure mind it. So, this structure is kind of you know something like this, it is a very very three dimensional structure. So, do not expect that this will come out as a thin film or something, okay. It is a fairly good you know three dimensional assembly. Okay. So, now if you have a really good microscope to look and look through through it, you will see something very interesting. It will almost look like that there are kind of very distinct lines crawling through out here, as if there are roads which are meant there, something like this. But then you really need a good microscope to see through them. Something like this. Now, if you go even further into it, layer by layer assembly of it, if you kind of you know make slices. So, for example, you have this is a structure and you start making slices like this, then you will observe the neurons which are present there have a very typical shape most of them are something has a geometry like this. With the dendritic network, so the shape is very similar to if I just reverse the shape, very similar to the pyramids and based on this shape, these neurons are called pyramidal neurons. It is purely based on the shape of the cell body. So, if you look at the shape, something like this, okay. So, hippocampal region uh, significant population consists of this large cell body of pyramidal neurons, which kind of are the most dominant uh, neuron types there. And the way they are arranged is very interesting. If you look at it, if you look at further into this circuit, what I was trying to tell you, it, it will look like something like this. You know, there are layers as if. I am just showing cell body on the bottom something like this. If you see pictures, it, they will look like this.
as if just imagine on your door there are a lot of frill or some kind of you know ribbons which are lying there so it's all of you have seen and the doors you put those kind of very very nice stuff like you know decoration stuff where they are hanging like this and in, in the air they move or wind chimes coming so it, it's something like this and and it is a very interesting array at different level so there are different level at which they are present so if this is one level this is another level this is another level now try to correlate it with one of the previous slides where i drew that they are located at different part of the space if this is space 1 this is space 2 this is space 3 so there are different levels so they have different lamina laminated just like you know you have seen table chairs where you have the laminations or something being done it's just like lamina there are different layers where they are arranged so if you look at this circuit look at these lines dot line you will see almost these are laminated so there are different levels and there are specific way this circuit is functioning there is a communication link which is all over this place and based on that from where these are coming or arriving they have different name called CA1, CA2, CA3, CA4 likewise. So they have different names like no. underneath is this area and talk more about it. So, this area they are very small out here the neurons which are present do not have this kind of unique morphology do not have they are different and this area is called dented gyrus in short if you see the brain maps they will consider it as they will write it as dg dented gyrus area this is one area where there are a lot of it's a kind of a seat for lot of brain progenitor neurons neural progenitor or neural progenitor or neural stem cells but whether these stem cells helps in the brain repair or what are their roles is still not clear to us we really cannot say with certainty but definitely dented gyrus is one area where there it's kind of you can call it a hot spot where there is tremendous amount of interest to understand what this uh, dented gyrus uh, stem cells or progenitor cells which are present somewhere or other they could uh, help in the repair or you know or somewhere or other are they playing a significant role in the brain functioning or not we really do not know this part but now coming back where this whole discussion started after giving you this anatomy now i will move on to talk about what happens so there are three aspects what will be dealing out here one we will talk about epilepsy with respect to this structure next we will talk about ad alzheimer's and third we will talk about memory all these three things will be dealing with this structure that's why this anatomy I'm spending significant time to explain this anatomy and the significance of this anatomy. Now, the neurons which are present here, this is one aspect of the anatomy which I told you. Most of these neurons which are present in the hippocampal region has certain unique neurotransmitter types. So, they are mostly 
either glutamatergic when I say glutamatergic it means these neurons secrete neuro transmitters like glutamate or glutamic acid which is a excitatory neurotransmitter NTs I am just putting for neurotransmitters and NTs ok. This is a glutamatergic or they are GABAergic they secrete GABA G amino beta acid acid okay. this is an inhibitory neurotransmitter inhibitory NTs. There is a third population which is a very controversial population some say they are there some say they are not there but at least from my own personal research account and studies, I can say with reasonable degree of certainty, there is a small population which is present here is cholinergic. It means they secrete acetylcholine. So, apart from the pyramidal neurons, there is another large number of neurons which are not like pyramidal neurons, but they are much more smaller. They are called interneurons, which are present in this hippocampal region in large numbers. So, you have pyramidal neurons, you have interneurons, they may have a neurotransmitter signature like either glutamatergic, gabergic or a small small population which is cholinergic. So, I will close in here for this class and in the next class we will move on to explore that how these neurotransmitter profiles influences the aspects of epilepsy or Alzheimer's disease and memory. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your patient listening.